Hello world, this is Brian Marchini. I've um, got another exciting installment of uh, videos here. What we're going to touch on now um, basically is how I'm using Microsoft Video to create a UML. I personally find it's easier to create a UML diagram before I go into coding rather than letting the um, IDE go ahead and create one for me after the fact. Uh, Using Visio, using Visio can be a little daunting at first. Um, it's pretty simple um, and pretty detailed and complex depending how far you go into it. Uh, to start out, uh, we're doing a problem here, uh, problem 11 in section 9 of a course I'm taking at the uh, local community college. Um, what I'm going to do here is click on the title bar, go to File, and we're going to get a new and create a new drawing. When we go down, these are the basics ones, basic ones that we see here. UML didn't come up at first. What I had to do is go down to Software and Database. Um, and then you'll find it down here, UML Model Diagram. Uh, click on that. Go ahead and double click it and we'll go ahead and create one here. And off we go. Um, what's pretty cool about this is it gives you a lot of different um, features that auto fill in with the correct context uh, for what you're doing. So in this case, what we have to do is we have to design a set of classes uh, that define a series of three-dimensional geometric shapes. Um, so our parent class is going to be shapes. So we'll go ahead and drag this class on here. And then what we'll do is we'll double-click this. It'll bring up a little window here. And we can just fill in all the information we need. Um, go through, type in shapes. Um, some of this stuff, you know, I'm not an expert in this, uh, so I'm kind of making some of the stuff up as I go and, and kind of basically just trying to figure it out myself. Um, what I'm finding here is your attributes are listed right here. Now with shapes, um, we know shapes uh, have an area, they have a volume, they have a circumference. We'll go ahead and add these in here. And we'll make this of the type... I'm going to use a virtual basic lingo, but it should carry on to Java pretty well, too. Um, it's going to be of the type, let's say, double. Um, we're going to make this protected. We could set an initial value. In this case, we'll just leave it blank. Um, we just tab through, go to the next section. Uh, we also know um, it's going to have a volume. Uh, same basic thing here. We'll make this a double. And a, finally, a circumference. And once we have that set, it's going to set up our, our initial class there. Now, of course, we're going to want to build a constructor and possibly some um, different class, different methods underneath that. Under here, if you click on operations, it'll bring you to that screen. Um, we're going to call this the same as our original. Uh, which will be our constructor. So let's just call this shapes. Uh, no return type, obviously. If we click the properties here, it's going to bring up where we can add all our different parameters. Um, so let's just start out with our basic parameters. Let's say we have all the information to begin with, which we may not, but it uh, you know it doesn't hurt to build a constructor with all the stuff in there already. Uh, so let's go through and we'll use A for area. We'll make it of the type double. You're just following the same basic thing we did before. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll create one for the volume. We'll use V for that. Once again, create the double. And last time, uh, circumference. And once again, oops, there we go. Create the double there. So we click this, um, click OK. And if we zoom in a little bit here so we can see, you can see it's already created our class for us. Now within this, of course, you could have lots of different um, uh, child classes. So let's go ahead and create some here. Uh, I'm going to drag another class in. Uh, we'll double click on it again, and we'll call this one a square. Um, with a square, uh, there's a lot of different attributes you know, that, that we can use in this to help um, determine. One of those obviously would be the sides. 
So let's create an attribute called side. Once again, we'll make this a double. And we're also going to need the depth. Now, of course, a cube, in this case, well, we really should be doing a cube, I guess. So we'll go ahead and change that back here. So let's change this to cube since we're going three dimensional shapes. And we're all set. Um, now, of course, we're going to need some operations for this. Uh, one of these is we're going to need one that's going to, well, we're going to need a constructor for it. Um, and in this case, uh, I'll go ahead and call it cube. So it matches the class type. Um, no return, obviously. Uh, once again, we're going to go through properties. And we're going to need to know basically just one side, a cube, every side is the same. Uh, so we'll go down to parameters. And we'll just put in, you know, S for side. Uh, make that a double. All right. And then we're going to create some um, more methods underneath here. Uh, we could go through and uh, let's say we're going to calculate volume. So we can create one called calc volume. And then we're going to return the volume. This is all the different listings under here. Um, and there we go. We, we just kind of set that up. And uh, if we wanted to, we could go through, create some more different uh, parameters, methods. I haven't really experimented with this too much to see exactly what this does. You can see we can also throw exceptions in there, um, different constraints, uh, maybe tag a value. Uh, so let's just go through parameters, calc volume. We're just going to take whatever was there before, so we'll let it go. So we'll go ahead and create this, and there we go. All set. It's well documented there. Now if we look up here, oh, I made a mistake. You can see right there, these are private variables. And of course, we're going to want to make them protect instead, so we just hop right back up there. Go to attributes, and from the drop-down, click protected. So they're not protected. It's not as easy to share across the class, but it's not going to feed back into the main uh, string. Um, for now, let's say I wanted to create some abstract ones as well to fill in for later. Um, once again, let's say we want to do a well another shape, um, perhaps a conic. Um, and at this point, we're just going to leave this very abstract. Um, so we just hit abstract here and fill in the, less, the rest later. Hit it out, and it's already going to put through the basics of that. Um, to connect this, I'm sure there's a better way at this point. I'm just using this little connecting bar. Uh, go ahead and click on there, drag it to the next one up. Um, nice thing about Visio is you can really move stuff around. And it'll readjust stuff for you automatically. So if I go through and I want to maybe center these more, make it look a little bit nicer, it'll go ahead and reconnect everything for me. And I'm set to go. Um, when we print this out, uh, I always save it um, first. Uh, let's go under here. We're going to call this one yeah, shapes, I guess. It sounds good. I always like to create a nice, nice folder for each of these, keep everything organized. Uh, we'll go ahead and save the drawing here, and then make sure you don't select any. If you just if you hit this, try to hit save. It's only going to save this uh, one class. You just want to click on the open field. Go ahead and hit and save. And oops, didn't name that right. But we'll go ahead and just type in here shapes. Drop down. I use a JPEG to save some space for the drawing when I upload this. And uh, as they say, bada bing. Bada boom, we're done. And what's great about this, I mean, me personally, is I, I'm a very visual learner. I, when I design things, um, whether it's in programming or whether it's in a different environment, I prefer to look at things visually first and then kind of jump into the code afterwards. So this is what helps me. Hope it helps you, and uh, have a great day.